So our cells can take glucose molecules, do a bunch of chemical reactions, and eventually convert them into pyruvate molecules. So this pathway of glucose into pyruvate is referred to as glycolysis. Then once we form those pyruvate molecules, they can enter the mitochondria, get converted into acetyl-CoA, and enter the Krebs cycle. So these two pathways of glycolysis in the Krebs cycle is referred to as central metabolism, and nearly all cells in the body go through central metabolism. So why do nearly all cells in the body go through central metabolism? Well, when we go through glycolysis in the Krebs cycle, we produce ATP. We produce these ATP molecules which can fuel all the energetic processes we need for life. And not just that, when we go through central metabolism, we also produce these reduced cofactors. And these reduced cofactors can fuel the electron transfer chain to create more or ATP. So that's why nearly all cells in the body go through central metabolism to produce ATP. But now you might wonder, can we take proteins and polypeptides? Can we use the energy in these proteins and polypeptides to enter central metabolism to be used to create ATP? Well, it depends. For example, let's say we have this polypeptide with these amino acid residues. What we can do is we can hydrolyze these peptide bonds. For example, let's say we hydrolyze this peptide bond. If we hydrolyze this peptide bond, we would release this amino acid. And specifically, this amino acid is alanine. So once we form this alanine, essentially what we need to do is we need to get rid of this nitrogen. We need to get rid of this nitrogen group. If we can get rid of this nitrogen group, we'll have a carbon backbone, which can now enter central metabolism. Because you might have noticed, all of these molecules are carbon oxygen, hydrogen based. There are no nitrogens in the central metabolism. However, we know these polypeptides and these amino acids have nitrogens. So once we release those amino acids, if we can get rid of those nitrogens, for example, if we get rid of this nitrogen, we would form this carbon backbone. We would form this carbon backbone. And once we form this particular carbon backbone, it can simply enter central metabolism and be used to create ATP. That's a way we can use these amino acids to create ATP. And specifically this, you might see when we take alanine and get rid of its nitrogen and replace it with the carbonyl, this carbon backbone happens to be pyruvate. So this can simply enter as pyruvate, enter central metabolism to create ATP. So exactly how do we get rid of this nitrogen? If we want to get rid of this nitrogen to create this carbon backbone to enter central metabolism, we need to somehow donate that nitrogen. We need to get rid of that nitrogen. So how do we do that? Well, we need a nitrogen acceptor. We need a molecule that accepts that nitrogen, that will take that nitrogen and accept that nitrogen. And normally the way we do this is we do a mix match where the nitrogen acceptor has a carbonyl and the amino acid has an amine and they essentially flip, they, they mix and match these, these, these functional groups. They replace and exchange these functional groups. And when they do that, this guy loses the nitrogen, the amino acid loses the nitrogen, now it has a carbon backbone which can enter central metabolism and be used to create ATP. And now this guy accepted the nitrogen. So you might wonder, what is the nitrogen acceptor? In most cells, what is the universal nitrogen acceptor? Well, it happens to be alpha-ketoglutarate. And that's just something you need to memorize. Alpha-ketoglutarate is the molecule our bodies use to accept these nitrogens so we can take amino acids, lose the nitrogens, forming a carbon backbone to enter central metabolism. So to lose those nitrogens, we need a nitrogen acceptor, and the universal nitrogen acceptor is alpha-ketoglutarate. So then alpha-ketoglutarate accepts that nitrogen, forming glutamate. So again, we release an amino acid. We want to get rid of that nitrogen. So we do it by donating it to alpha-ketoglutarate. So now this alpha-ketoglutarate accepts that nitrogen. And if it accepts that nitrogen, and it turns into glutamate. So now this glutamate has this waste nitrogen, which we don't need. We don't need this nitrogen. So now how do we get rid of this waste nitrogen that we don't need? Well, this glutamate can go through a process referred to as oxidative deamination, where it simply gets rid of that nitrogen. It gets rid of that nitrogen in the form of ammonia. And when it gets rid of that nitrogen in the form of ammonia, it reforms this alpha-ketoglutarate. And now that we've reformed alpha-ketoglutarate, now it can accept more nitrogens. For example, maybe now we hydrolyze this peptide bond, releasing another amino acid. So now we release another amino acid. So we know with these amino acids, as long as we can get rid of this nitrogen, we would form a carbon backbone, which can enter central metabolism and be used to create ATP. So to get rid of this nitrogen, we need a nitrogen acceptor. And we know alpha-ketoglutarate is our nitrogen acceptor. So now the alpha-ketoglutarate accepts that nitrogen, forming this, this carbon backbone. And this carbon backbone happens to be oxaloacetate, which can simply enter as oxaloacetate. This molecule, this part of the Krebs cycle is oxaloacetate. So it can simply enter the Krebs cycle and be used to, to be oxidized to create ATP. But then again, 
This alpha keto glutarate accepted this nitrogen, so now it accepts another nitrogen forming glutamate. And again, we know this nitrogen is a waste. So this glutamate gets rid of that nitrogen in the form of ammonia. So now it'll get, it'll get rid of another, then this other nitrogen in the form of ammonia, reforming the alpha ketoglutarate, which can now accept more nitrogens. However, every time we get rid of these, these amines in the form of ammonia, this is actually dangerous because this ammonia is toxic. Ammonia is toxic to the cell. So every time we have this alpha ketoglutarate, we accept a nitrogen, forming glutamate and then getting rid of that nitrogen in the form of ammonia, this is bad. Ammonia is toxic. However, specifically in the liver, the liver can take that ammonia, enter it into the urea cycle to form urea. And urea is non-toxic. Urea is safe. And, then when, and again, that's why I drew the check mark. So again, ammonia is toxic. However, it can enter the urea cycle to form urea, which is safe, which, which is non-toxic, and which now will enter the bloodstream, get filtered out in our kidneys, and get excreted in, 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 in our kidneys, in our urine. But something important to realize is only the liver can go through the urea cycle. Only the liver, the liver tissue is the only tissue or, or the major tissue that goes through this process of, of safely disposing this ammonia in the form of urea through going through the urea cycle. So some key things to take away from this process is first of all, we know we, we break one of the, we hydrolyze one of those peptide bonds releasing an amino acid, but every single amino acid, whenever we have an amino acid, we can get rid of that nitrogen. And when we get rid of that nitrogen, we usually replace it with a carbonyl. And whenever we take an amino acid and we get rid of that nitrogen forming a carbonyl, we form an alpha keto acid. So every single amino acid, all 20 amino acids can get rid of their nitrogens forming an alpha keto acid. So all amino acids, Every single individual amino acid has its own analogous alpha keto acid. For example, we let's say we hydrolyze this bond releasing aspartate, which again, this is aspartate, an amino acid. It can get rid of its amine, forming a carbonyl, forming oxaloacetate, which is an alpha keto acid. So again, another example is this is glutamate. Glutamate is an amino acid, but every single amino acid can get rid of its nitrogen forming an, a, a, this analogous alpha keto acid. And specifically, this is alpha ketoglutarate. So again, every single amino acid has an analogous alpha keto acid. And these are just a couple examples. And something else important to realize is we can take this, this, this alpha keto acid reacting with the amino acid, forming a new amino acid and forming a new alpha keto acid. Because again, all amino acids have analogous alpha keto acid. So this process is when we react an alpha keto acid with an amino acid, forming a new amino acid and a new alpha keto acid, this process is referred to as transamination. And these processes are catalyzed by transaminases. And then once we form glutamate, we know this glutamate goes through that oxidative deamination where it gets rid of that nitrogen in the form of ammonia. So this process is referred to as as oxidative deamination and is catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase. So again, this is the basis of, of nitrogen metabolism. So again, but something important to realize is now let's say we released another amino acid and let's say we have this generic amino acid. So again, we have this alpha carbon with the carbonyl group, the amine group, and the R group. We know every single amino acid has an analogous alpha keto acid. So again, this amino acid will have an analogous alpha keto acid. But something important to realize is, again, we said this amino acid, we want to get rid of that nitrogen, so then we can form this structure which can enter central metabolism. But depending on the R group, depending on the R group will determine what structure this is. So depending on the R group will determine what structure this is. So therefore, sometimes once we get rid of this first nitrogen, we might have a structure that may need to go through a few more modifications, but usually they can eventually be converted into one of these intermediates, which can now enter central metabolism and be used to create ATP. So now let's look at the big picture. So let's say we have our liver, skeletal muscle, and just a generic cell. So in our liver, we may have an amino acid. But we know if we have an amino acid, as long as we can get rid of the nitrogen to form this carbon backbone, it can enter central metabolism to be used to create ATP. So how do we get rid of this amine? Well, again, we need our alpha ketoglutarate, our, our universal nitrogen acceptor. So this alpha ketoglutarate can accept that nitrogen. It can get rid of that nitrogen. So when we do that, Again, it, it accepts that nitrogen forming glutamate, and now this amino acid loses that nitrogen forming this carbon backbone, which can now enter central metabolism to create ATP. It also can be used to enter some other processes, but the point is we have this amino acid, we want to get rid of that amine, and to get rid of that amine, we donated to alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. Now that glutamate, remember, can go through that ox can, can, can go through that 
oxidative deamination. This glutamate goes through oxidative deamination, getting rid of that nitrogen, forming ammonia. And then once we form that ammonia, we know it can enter the urea cycle to form urea, which is non-toxic, which can safely be disposed of and excreted out of the body. So this is, this is how the liver can use amino acids as a source of energy, as long as it can safely dispose that, that, those amines in the form of urea. However, what's going on in the skeletal muscle? So we know the skeletal muscle also has proteins. So can the skeletal muscle also use these proteins to, as a source of energy to enter central metabolism to create ATP? Well, yeah, in certain conditions it can. So again, we, we have this polypeptide. What we would do is hydrolyze this peptide bond, releasing an amino acid. So now we release an amino acid. So now once we have this amino acid, as long as we can get rid of this nitrogen, forming this carbon backbone, it can enter central metabolism to create ATP. So how do we get rid of that nitrogen? Well, again, we have to react it with alpha-ketoglutarate, our universal nitrogen acceptor. So now the alpha-ketoglutarate accepts that nitrogen. When it accepts that nitrogen, it forms glutamate. So it accepts that nitrogen forming glutamate. And now this, guy, this amino acid lost the nitrogen. Now we have this carbon backbone, this alpha-keto acid, which can enter central metabolism to be used to create ATP. So now we have this glutamate with, with this nitrogen waste product. We don't, we don't want, we don't need this nitrogen. So we donate it to alpha ketoglutarate. So now this glutamate has this waste nitrogen. So what is this glutamate going to do with all this, this nitrogen, this waste nitrogen? Is it also going to go through that, that oxidative deamination, releasing it in the form of ammonia so it can enter the urea cycle to form urea? Well, no. Remember, only the liver can go through the urea cycle. Only the liver can safely dispose ammonia and, and entered into the urea cycle to form urea. So therefore, this will not occur in the skeletal muscle. So once the skeletal muscle has this, um, this nitrogen in the form of glutamate, what is it going to do with all this nitrogen? Well, what it does is specifically in certain tissues like the skeletal muscle, what it does is it reacts it with pyruvate. And we know the skeletal muscle will have a lot of pyruvate. It's also going through glycolysis, so it's going to have a lot of pyruvate. So specifically in the skeletal muscle, it takes pyruvate to accept that nitrogen. So now this pyruvate accepts that nitrogen from glutamate. And when it does that, it essentially forms alanine. When pyruvate accepts that nitrogen, it forms alanine. And now the glutamate loses that nitrogen, forming alpha-ketoglutarate. So now we have more alpha-ketoglutarate to accept more nitrogen. So now we're, re we're remaking those alpha-ketoglutarates. But the point is, this pyruvate accepts that nitrogen waste. And when it accepts it, it turns into alanine. So now the alanine has that nitrogen waste product. So now that alanine will essentially leave the skeletal muscle to enter the liver. So now it enters the liver. So now once it enters the liver, now the liver can take this waste nitrogen and dispose it safely. Because again, it, it, again, we would take the alanine, deliver it to the liver. Now it essentially will take that waste nitrogen, donate it to the alpha-ketoglutarate, which will accept it, in the in forming glutamate, which now the glutamate has that waste nitrogen, which can go through that oxidative deamination, forming ammonia, which can now enter the urea cycle to form urea to safely dispose that waste of nitrogen. So again, the point is, this skeletal muscle, is, if it wants to use these proteins and, and amino acids to create energy, it needs to safely get rid of these nitrogens. So again, the way it does is it is it effectively, eventually dumps it onto pyruvate to form alanine, and so now when we have alanine, now the alanine has that waste nitrogen, which can send it to the liver to safely dispose it in the form of urea. And again, and then, so, so it, the skeletal muscle specifically uses alanine to transport that nitrogen to safely dispose it. And now the, the liver's job can safely dispose that nitrogen. So now let's say we have a generic cell, just a generic typical cell. So again, we know, we know the cell, essentially, it, it has amino acids. And the cell can use these amino acids for energy. How? We know as long as the amino acid can get rid of that nitrogen to form a carbon backbone, now it can enter central metabolism to be used to create ATP. So how does, the, how does the cell get rid of this nitrogen so we can use the amino acid for energy? Well, we know we need a nitrogen acceptor, and we know the universal nitrogen acceptor is alpha-ketoglutarate. So the alpha-ketoglutarate accepts that nitrogen. So when it accepts that nitrogen, now the amino acid loses that nitrogen. Now it has a carbon backbone, so now it can enter central metabolism to create ATP. So that's how a generic cell can take an amino acid and use it to create ATP. But now the alpha-ketoglutarate accepted that nitrogen, so now it has glutamate with, with this waste nitrogen. So what is the cell going to do with this waste nitrogen? Can it go through that oxidative deamination, forming ammonia to enter the urea cycle? Well, again, no. No, only the liver can safely dispose ammonia through the urea cycle.
So any typical cell cannot go through this process. So what is this generic cell going to do with this, this, ammonia, this nitrogen waste in the form of glutamate? And not just that, to make things worse, is in the cell there are other biomolecules with nitrogen molecules. For example, nucleotides. We know the cell has lots of nucleotides like RNA and DNA nucleotides. And not just that, sometimes we're going to degrade these nucleotides. There's turnover. Sometimes the cell is making new nucleotides, sometimes it's degrading nucleotides. So when it degrades these nucleotides, what is it going to do with all that waste, all that, that ammonia waste? Well, what it can do is it can take this glutamate, and this glutamate can now accept another nitrogen. It accepts this waste from these other biomolecules. When it accepts another nitrogen, it forms glutamine. So notice what's going on. This alpha ketoglutarate accepts one nitrogen from the amino acid, forming glutamate. Now it accepts another nitrogen from these, these nitrogen compounds, forming glutamine. So now this glutamine has two of these nitrogen waste compounds. So, so what is it going to do? Well, now the glutamine will be delivered to the liver. So now the glutamine is delivered to the liver, and now it can safely be disposed of. Now the nitrogen can safely be disposed of. First, that glutamine, first step is it gets rid of that, of specifically gets rid of this nitrogen in, in this, in this middle group. So again, first it gets rid of this nitrogen, and when it gets rid of that nitrogen forming ammonia, when it gets rid of this nitrogen, it forms glutamate. Now, when, with this glutamate, we know this glutamate can go through oxidative deamination, releasing this nitrogen in the form of ammonia. And it's okay to produce all this ammonia in the liver because the liver can go through the urea cycle to safely dispose the ammonia in the form of urea so it can be excreted out of the body. But the key point of this video is only the liver can safely dispose of nitrogen. So again, in the cell, it wants to use these amino acids for energy, so it needs to dispose of this nitrogen. So first it donates it to alpha ketoglutarate. So now, so now this alpha ketoglutarate accepts one nitrogen. Now again, it can accept another nitrogen. Now it has all this nitrogen waste from the cell. So now it has all this nitrogen waste from the cell, delivers it to the liver, and now the liver can safely dispose it. And again, the same thing with the skeletal muscle. It wants to use these proteins for energy. So again, it, if it wants to use this amino acid for energy, it needs to safely get rid of this nitrogen. So how does it get rid of this nitrogen waste? First, it donates it to alpha ketoglutarate. So, so it donates that nitrogen to alpha ketoglutarate. So now, now the glutamate has that waste nitrogen. Now it donates that nitrogen to pyruvate. So now this alanine has that waste nitrogen. So now, now all that wasteful nitrogen from, from the skeletal muscle can be in the form of alanine, which can be delivered to the liver. And now the liver can safely dispose of that nitrogen. Again, through, through this process, where again, now it, it sent, it, it's essentially all this nitrogen is, is converted into urea, which can safely be disposed out of the body through the kidneys. So these cells that are using proteins for energy have these waste nitrogen products. So all these waste nitrogen products are delivered to the liver and the liver can safely dispose of those waste nitrogen products. And not just that, when, when the skeletal muscle delivers its alanine, the alanine can donate its nitrogen to, to, to glutamate. And when it does that, it forms this, this essentially, which is essentially pyruvate, which can also, not only can it be used to, to be oxidized to create ATP, it can also be used to create glucose. And when this, this pyruvate is used to create glucose, it forms glucose, which can re be sent to the skeletal muscle. So this, this cycle of alanine being sent to the liver and then glucose being sent to the skeletal muscle, this is referred to as the glucose alanine cycle. But the point is, a lot, we, if we, in, when we're thinking about nitrogen metabolism, all that nitrogen waste, we deliver to the liver. And then the liver can safely dispose of that nitrogen in the form of urea.